There seems to be a little bit of a tendency when using Photoshop to use the tools with the default settings and not really leverage all of the options that are available when it comes to adjusting the behavior of a given tool. That can make some of your image cleanup work a little bit more challenging. For example, if I wanted to clean up this scratch on the hood of a car that goes right in between the flower petals that are painted there, then I'd have a little bit of a challenge. If I were to use the clone stamp tool, for example, I would need to reduce the size of the brush rather significantly to get down into that small area. However, if I change the shape of my brush, that work can be a lot easier. And the ability to change the shape of the brush might not be readily apparent. I'll go ahead and create a new layer by clicking on the Create New Layer button at the bottom of the Layers panel. And then I'll double click on the name of the layer and type a new name. I'll just call this Cleanup. And I'll press Enter or Return to rename that layer. And then I'll make sure that the settings are as I want them for the Clone Stamp tool. In particular, making sure that the sample setting is at all layers and that I've turned on the option to ignore the effect of adjustment layers. I can then click the Brush Panel button on the Options bar for the Clone Stamp tool and adjust the shape of my brush. In particular, I want to adjust the roundness and the angle. I'll go ahead and increase the size of the brush and then I'm going to reduce the roundness. I'll go ahead and just click my mouse inside the roundness field and then I'm going to move my mouse back over the image so that I can see the shape of the brush as I modify it. I'll then use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the roundness value. I'll hold the shift key so that I can increase by larger increments and then I'll use the down arrow key to reduce by 10% increments at a time until I have the brush tip shaped the way I think I'd like it in terms of that roundness. I'm essentially squishing that circle down into an oval shape. I'll then go to the angle field. I'll go ahead and click in the angle field and once again move the mouse back out over the image and now I can adjust the angle with the up and down arrow keys, again using the shift key as well if I want to adjust in 10% increments. I'll move the brush as I fine tune the shape, rotating the angle, and that looks to be a pretty good setting right about there. So you can see now I have a larger brush that's able to get into that little nook in this particular image. Obviously, each image is going to be a little bit different. For example, if I was cleaning up over on this side of this little flower, then I would need a completely different angle. You can actually save these settings. I'll go ahead and save this brush. I'll call it my 15 degree, 20% roundness brush. I'll go ahead and click on the new brush preset option, and I'll type 15 degree, 20% roundness. Now, obviously, I could reference the direction the brush is pointing, whatever it is that helps me get a better sense of what that brush looks like. I'll go ahead and click OK. And in the future, you'll see that I can choose that brush from the bottom of the brush pop-up on the options bar for the Clone Stamp tool. So I could create several different brushes at different angles, at different roundnesses, and then switch between them as needed. Or, of course, I could customize the brush every time I need to fine-tune the shape adjusting the roundness and angle to suit the cleanup work that I need to do. I'm in good shape now though. I'll go ahead and close the brush panel and then I'll hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Macintosh to choose a source area for my pixels. And then I'll get right down into that nook and click and drag across the blemish here. And you can see I'm able to make much faster work of this cleanup task because I fine-tuned the shape of that brush.